Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to talk about the negative aspects of running a torpedo build, and also I want to answer the question that some of you may have as to whether or not these builds are still worth running in 2022 as we move into 2023. So the reason I'm talking about this now is because torpedo builds have had a lot of time in the spotlight over the past couple of years because they have been the top performer for anyone that wants to compete on the infected elite table for, for quite a long time now. If you want to actually move really high up on the table, uh, whether by yourself or with a team, then torpedoes have been the most effective route to progress and compete on that table. Now, there's been a lot of guides, a lot of builds talking about these torpedo builds over the past couple of years, but not many have been talking about the negative aspects to torpedoes. I tried to mention some of these when I did my torp build guide a year ago, which I'll have linked down below if you want to go check that out to get a better understanding of the torpedo builds in general. But I talked about some of the issues back then, and I want to expand on those issues and also talk about some new ones that have become apparent over the past year. And the first one I want to talk about is that mines can cause enemies to disappear off the map. Now, something that some of you may not know is that these torpedo builds are also mine builds. So if you look at the ship that I'm currently using here, the United Earth Defense Force vessel, I've got the, the main four torps that everyone runs up in my forward slots. And then in my aft weapon slots, I've got four mine launchers. And this is how most of these torp builds have been set up now at a high level for at least the last 18 months. So every torpedo build that's competing at a high level is also a mine build. And the issue that happens with this is that too many mines on a map can cause the enemies to disappear. And over on Reddit, Delor and EPH went and did some testing uh, at the tail end of last year, I want to say, and they found that for infected elite or the infected map in general, the entity limit of the map is somewhere around 100 to 120 entities. And the thing is that each of these mines that you launch out of your ship counts as an entity. And if you have something with a mine dispersal pattern beta two or three, you can launch a lot of mines at once. Like right here, uh, you can see just me using that dispersal pattern beta three with just me launching this one mine launcher would shoot out 14 mines. And, you know, I've got multiple mine launchers on, so... You can see how if I can launch 14 at a time, you can quite quickly get up to that 100 or so entities in a map. Now, let me show you what happens when you approach that entity limit. Uh, this is from a channel run that I did the other day. It was absolutely terrible because there was two tort boats in here. Um, but as you see, as the mines start to like to spawn in between me and that other torp user, everything on the map disappears in front of us. Now they're not dead. We still have to find them and kill them, but we won't see them unless we're right up against them or all of our mines are blown up. So you see then that as the timer goes down, um, as, as I fly in towards them, they become visible again, but even some of them that are within like a kilometer or two of me don't become visible right away. So this, this is a very big issue for these mine builds. And especially if there's multiple in the same run, it can be quite difficult because like you saw that cube disappeared while I was shooting it. So you see, it just disappeared there as I'm shooting it. Then as I got closer, it reappeared. So I, I would hope you can understand that that can make it a bit difficult to to uh, like fly your ship and complete the map if things keep disappearing in front of you. So mines, mines can do a lot of spike damage when you call in a ton of them at a time. But the issue is obviously, you know, causing the enemies to disappear can be a massive pain. The other thing with mines that has become very apparent over the last year is that one of the reasons we've been using mines is very much looking like it's unintended. 
And the resonating payload modification personal space trait is supposed to have a stack limit of five. Each stack is a minus five physical and kinetic debuff to the target you're hitting with your kinetic weapons. And if you just fire torps at a target, it's it stays at that stack limit of five. However, because each of the mines ca counts as their own entity, they can bypass that cap. So you can see here with this second picture at the right side, I have 52 stacks when there should be a stack limit of five. Now those 52 stacks means that that is 260 physical and kinetic debuff just from me using resonating with my minds. That is a huge amount of debuff and can significantly impact your performance capability with the torp boat. In fact, I did a test with out that trade on and with the trade on and by me just taking that trade off, it represented an 11 and a half percent drop in my DPS in the test that I did. So one of the core parts of these tort boats is, you know, taking advantage of these mines. And one of the issues is one of the main reasons we use these mines is because of this resonating payload trait. And it's looking like it's not working as intended because it, we're able to go so far above that stack limit of five. So, you know, it's questionable if you want to invest in something that is partially reliant on something, you know, that is looking like it gets uh, not intended functionality. I won't be surprised if Cryptic goes through and changes this in the future to fix the fact that mines are allowing you to bypass that stack limit. Next up, I want to talk about Concentrate Firepower 3. And I know this is something I talked about extensively in my build guide here, um, but I actually have some numbers now to talk about the performance impact of having CF, having the lower ranks of it, and not having it on at all. So when you are doing a torpedo build, if you want it to be a really effective build, you really, really want to have a ship that has a Lieutenant Commander command seat at least because Concentrate Firepower 3 is huge for the performance gains that it will give you. So I went in and did some testing over on Tribble with no CF on, so no Concentrate Firepower with the different ranks. And as you can see, by not having Concentrate Firepower on your torpedo build, you are losing 75% of your damage potential. So if you do not have Concentrate Firepower on your build, and specifically you want rank three of it, if you don't have that on your torpedo build, you may as well not be running a torpedo build. In fact, as you can see here, if you don't have Concentrate Firepower on, even a beam overload build should be able to out DPS a torp build with no CF. Now, the reason Concentrate Firepower is so impactful is because it will deal extra kinetic damage with 100% shield pen based on the damage you do from your torpedoes. And every couple seconds, it will give you a high yield one and it will reset your torpedo cooldowns all the way down. So I've got some footage to show you of this. Let me pull it up here. So here is with CF. Um, on this target, you can see that I can just keep spamming torps out. You see that my torpedoes just keep resetting to basically no cooldown. You see that they just, I, I can just keep spamming them. Like every, every other second I can spam out more torpedoes. And they're all high yields because of concentrate firepower. Now, let's see what happens if you don't have concentrate firepower on. So without concentrate firepower... You see that all of your torpedoes have this really long cooldown. And they're all just, when they fire, most of them are just standard shots. So, concentrate firepower is absolutely huge for torpedo builds. And like I said, if you're not running concentrate firepower, you may as well not be running a torpedo build. If they ever hit concentrate firepower, like if, if they were to go out and nerf it, torpedo builds would just become extinct. Like if you don't have concentrate firepower on a torp build right now, you're just throwing away so much damage potential. Like again, here is, you see the, the, the torps taking forever to recharge. 
Now let me show you again what happens when concentrate firepower is back on the build and being used. You just fire torp after torp after torp. Now back to the no CF. And you just see it's it's chugging along like I'm bare, barely firing torpedoes. And back to the concentrate firepower now. Just spamming. Constant spam of torpedoes. Apparently I had a misfire right there. It's a bad example. But you see most of the time here, it's just spamming torpedo after torpedo so long as concentrated firepower doesn't misfire on the target. So it's just... Just constant hits. And... Then just... A couple torps going out every couple seconds. So... CF is huge. Not having it on. You basically may as well not have a torp build. So the other thing with that is Concentrate Firepower is a 20 second duration mark on target ability. It can be used every 15 seconds, so you can have it up all the time. And what this means, though, is with it being a 15 second minimal cooldown, is that you want to be in situations, you want to use these torp boats in content where you can go in and hammer the same target for, you know, at least 10 to 15 seconds at a time. And the simple reality is, if you're doing advanced content, things are going to die too fast. So normal and advanced, you're better off with an energy build. Uh, energy build. Like, Cannon Scatter Volley just absolutely destroys advanced content normal. Like, here's MB's uh, 2.25 million run. This is not on the table right now because it was trimmed. But you just see everything just dies. And with a torp boat... You're not getting this type of performance, this type of speed in normal or advanced with a torp boat. Torp boats, the torps move slowly, and you're focusing one target at a time. Something like Cannon Scatter Volley can hit multiple targets at a time and just deal devastating amounts of damage to them if you build your ship right. There's also an issue with the lower ranks of Concentrate Firepower uh, being drastically weaker than rank 3. So... Ideally, you want to have just Concentrate Firepower rank 3 on your build. Having these lower ranks is a significant damage loss. So, as you see, Concentrate, uh, concentrate Firepower rank 2 uh, is a 35.6% DPS loss versus Concentrate Firepower 3. Uh, rank 1 of Concentrate Firepower is a 51.4% loss of D DPS compared to rank 3. And then, of course, if you have no Concentrate Firepower on at all, that is a 74.5% loss compared to having Concentrate Firepower 3 on your build. Now, the other issue with CF, uh, with these lower ranks, is that if you have teammates that use lower ranks of CF, they control you by putting the lower rank on the target that you're hitting because there's an issue that I don't think Cryptic has fixed yet, in which the lower rank of Concentrate Firepower on a target would override the higher rank. So I don't think that's been fixed yet. Someone correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, but that is another thing you have to worry about with Concentrate Firepower. And then the next thing with CF is the fact that the high yields and the torpedo cooldown reduction that you get from it, the, the proc from it here, where it gives you that once per X amount of seconds, it grants the high yield and resets your torpedo cooldowns. Yeah, other people on your team can get that, and any pets that have torpedoes can also steal those procs from you. So this makes it extremely difficult to have multiple torpedo builds in the same run, because you're just going to steal the procs from each other, and nobody... If you have two torp boats in the same run, you're just going to ruin the run for both of you. Like, there's, there's not going to be a winner. It's just going to be bad for both players. And here is a test I did at the bottom where I took a... Uh, I had a secondary account that I brought in that I used the Todouge Fighter Squadron on. And with those out next to me while I was firing torpedoes out from my main ship... I ended up taking a 22% loss in DPS because the... The pets and that secondary account were able to steal concentrate firepower procs from me. And 
pets are not going to do anywhere near the amount of damage you would do with the torpedoes that they get. In fact, if I pull this up here, you know, my concentrate firepower is doing a, quite a bit of damage. My torps are doing a lot of damage. And then if I go and look at that other account I had in here, you know, the, the damage it got from concentrate firepower is minimal. Damage its pets did, minimal. So, like, these pets, over the course of three minutes, did just under 400,000 damage. And compared that to some of the torpedoes I had, many some of my torpedoes had max one hits larger than that, you know? It's, like, the, these pets will never compete with the damage potential of your own torpedoes. So, having pets... It, uh, with the ability to steal those concentrate firepower procs from you that reset the cooldown of the torps and give a high yield, the pets are not going to benefit from them anywhere near what you would. And it just, they can cripple your performance if you have a ton of people in there using pets that have torpedoes on. The next issue that some people may have with torpedo builds is the fact that if you really want to maximize their performance, you need to use manual fire keybinds. The reason for this is that high yield EBMs, so a high yield of the enhanced biomolecular torpedo works best against a group of enemies. But if you have just a single target, like a TAC cube that you're trying to slam, then high yield of the Delphic torpedo is going to be more effective. And then there's going to be situations where you want to control your torp spreads so that you would fire a neutronic spread rather than an EBM or Delphic. So having this level of control is really beneficial but it does require a higher player skill and mechanical skill than just auto firing your torpedoes. And some people don't like that. <clears throat> so to summarize, torpedo builds are really effective in scenarios where targets live more than 10 to 15 seconds, which the, the reality is that we're at a point with power creep where that's starting to get rare in some elite scenarios. So, uh, it sure as hell isn't good enough for normal or advanced. And Cannon Scout of Volley, like I showed, like with MB's run here, Cannon Scout of Volley is just so much better. Like if we look at this run again, things just die the moment he starts shooting. He goes to the side, shoots, it's dead. Like this, this is infected advanced, you know, in like under 20 seconds with a cannon scatter volley build and torpedoes can't operate at that speed. So if that's, if you're wanting to get through content fast, torpedoes aren't it. Torpedoes are something you would take into elite content and you would want to make sure that you're the only torp build in there. Ideally there's the issues with mines causing despawn. There's the issue with that trait with mines. It's not working as intended, which could devalue mines on these builds if they ever fix it. Um, concentrate firepower has a whole set of issues, like the fact that if you don't have it on a tort build, your damage is like a quarter of what it is. You know, if you like having no CF on, is just brutal compared to having CF three on, like you're doing 25% of the damage output on your tort build with uh, no CF versus what you would do if you had CF three on. Um, there's the issue with the concentrate firepower procs being able to be stolen by teammates or pets. And that means trying to do uh, public queues or channel runs with a torp build can be quite frustrating, especially if you get another torp user in there. And teammates control you by using lower ranks of concentrated firepower on targets. And then the last summary is advanced keybinds are ideally needed if you want to maximize your performance. So should you invest in a torpedo build? If you only play normal and advanced content, the answer is no. If you play just normal and advanced content, you know, just set up a, a CSV build. In fact, there's, you know, if I go to the, like the builds discord, we have an entire area for energy weapon builds and there's tons of different cannon builds posted here. Like, you can set up a cannon build on so many different ships. There's lots of ways to build these things. You can use whatever 
flavor of weapons you want. You know, just just know if you're doing normal and advanced, and even most elite content, these CSV builds are going to be more practical. You're going to get a better return for your investment from a cannon scatter volley build than you will a torpedo build. If you're doing elite content and you want to chase DPS records, then yeah, these torpedo boats might be of more value to you. But, you know, at the end of the day too, you also have to factor in what is your access to a team? You know, if you want to really push up high on the DPS tables. Because there's lots of people with torpedo builds, but there's not many people doing organized runs with a coordinated group to really push for high records. So, um, you know, it's that there's a question too there of, do you, do you really want to invest in a torp boat, you know, without having a team to, to run it with? Because these builds are not cheap. In fact, I think I did a breakdown. Let me find it here. I did a breakdown of a Courage build a while back, and the prices have definitely changed since then, but that this was a breakdown of a build on July 1st of, of this year. It was the last time I modified this, and like these builds are not cheap. You know, these builds are super expensive. They, they cost a lot of EC, they cost a lot of Zen, they cost a lot of everything. Like these, these high end builds, especially these tort builds are extremely expensive. And unless you really know you're going to be doing content where you'd benefit from these, or you're going to be doing these organized runs, I just wouldn't invest in a tort build. I just, I really do think that, you know, at the end of the day, a cannon scatter volley build is going to net you a lot more than, you know, a, a tort build here, because it, it, the fact is, even for me, I have multiple tort builds. I, I have multiple tort builds that I have on this character, but if I want to go in and I want to do normal or advanced content, I'm not going to bring out, you know, like the, the United Defense Force vessel here. I'm not going to bring out a tort boat. I'm going to bring out either cannon scatter volley or beam overload. Because those are going to be more effective in the content that most people play. So hopefully this discussion has been helpful to you. Uh, hopefully it's given you some input on whether or not you should invest in these builds. I just, I think given the fact of how expensive the builds are, how niche they are, I just don't think most people should be investing in them. I think that, like I said, Cannon Scatter Volley build, there's a lot of flexibility with those builds. You can put those, uh, you can set those up on so many different ships and they're going to do a lot more for you than any of these torp builds ever could. But that's going to be it for me today. Thank you all for, for tuning in and sticking around for this whole 23 minutes here. Uh, more Stow content coming soon, and including some content coverage of the, the Norway. So stay tuned for that later this week. But that's going to be it for me today. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time.